What here's what I'm so curious about. Can somebody tell me what is um people get so mad about people doing react content and then in the next breath they'll here's here you go. You ready? You want my score? Oh, scorching hot take coming. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I love fighting consumers. Yes. Scorching hot take coming. If you use fucking ad block and you pirate why the fuck are you crying about people stealing other people's digital fucking content? Get the fuck out of here. Boom! Boom, shakalaka. Boom! 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 You made this take like two months ago. Yeah, I stand by it. It's not profiting off using ad block. Yeah, but you're depriving somebody else of money. Wait, is that really what you're upset about? Are you upset that somebody else is making money off of it? Or are you upset that somebody's depriving somebody else of money? Is it just a spite-based argument? <laughs> Wait, what? Are you like if some, let's say somebody could steal somebody's content and make a million dollars off of it, but the other person doesn't lose any money? Is that a bad thing to you? You're just mad because somebody else making money. You're not even mad because somebody's being deprived of money. What a f that's even that's an even worse argument. I just hate Hassan. That's a good argument. Based. We're investing in some big. If you think they're equal, why don't you use AdBlock? Um, do I, I don't know if they are equal. I'm not sure, but I don't use AdBlock. Someone republishing another person kind of doing both, siphoning off money from the original creator, and in doing to make a to making a problem for themselves with the hard work of someone else. Or does my be on one individual refusing to accept ads? Um, I'm sure there's probably some people that don't watch. I don't know what the net effect is at the end of the day. I have no idea. Um, there's probably a healthy number of people that don't watch. There's probably a big substitution effect from a streamer watching something versus actually consuming the original products. So there probably is some net effect loss. I wish that. I feel like the I, it'll never happen, but um. It would be nice if there was like an auto licensing system that just let you like, you know, I made a thousand dollars watching this video. You know, you give 200 to the creator or 300 or 400 or whatever. It would be nice if there was like an automatic way to adjust for that. I feel like every, I feel like most people would be happy with that arrangement. The video they're reacting to got like 3.5 million views in two days. Yeah, but like, I feel like if you were watching TikToks on stream, I feel like that content Stealing that content is not that bad because people are going to go watch more TikToks or might even rewatch the same ones because it's a short meme. Um, one of the things that I think, I think when you're determining fair use, I think one of the four points of fair use um, is, a, is a substitution effect. I think, let me check. I might have just made that up. Is that, it might be factor four. Let me check. Hold on. Effect on the market is perhaps more complicated than the other three factors. Fundamentally, this factor means that if you could have realistically purchased or licensed the copyrighted work, that fact weighs against defining a fair use. To evaluate this factor, you may need to make a simple investigation of the market to determine if the work is reasonably available for purchase or licensing. A work may be reasonably available if you're using a large portion of that book that is for sale. The effect is closer to your purpose. The amount or substantia, substantiality, substant, substantiality, yes, of the portion used. The amount used is usually evaluated. No, no, no. Courts are ruling. Maybe excessive. A short clip of the motion picture may be acceptable, but not if it covers. Maybe it's more under factor three. But the um, I think that when it comes to watching like a one or two hour video on stream, there's probably a much more significant substitution there. Because like if I watch a if I watch a thirty second meme on my stream, you might go watch that meme on your own, and like you're probably helping the original creator. But if I watch a two hour video on, on stream, the chances of you watching that two hour video on your own probably go to almost zero. Why would you watch a, another two hour video that you've already watched before, you know? You can make the argument that the average viewer isn't seeing the whole two hour long react, but that argument is defeated when you upload the whole thing to YouTube anyway. Yeah, once you upload it to YouTube, it changes. But like, the reality is, is let's say the original video gets 5 million views. Let's say I react to it and I get 10 million views. If I react to the entire thing of those 10 million views, Maybe a million of those people would have watched it all on their own, but now probably almost none of them are. My, my guess would be very, very, very few people would. Yeah, that's true, and that's a really hard one. The only difference there is that gaming companies allow you to do it. There is a big argument to be made that story-based games, once consumed in a streaming format, would never, ever, ever be consumed by a person. Like, if you watch somebody play through all of The Last of Us Part 1 and 2, are you really going to buy the game and play it yourself? The more story-driven a game is, probably the less likely that is to happen, right? I'm curious, how is ad blocking different to streaming someone else's content? It's the same idea of potential earnings. You can't know for sure if the person would watch it and give the, get the, but I'm, ad block is just an infinitely harmful, ad blocking is just like a brutally harmful thing in like the industry. Like again, if, um, 
if every single streamer could choose between getting rid of all React content or getting rid of ad block, you wouldn't even be able to finish the sentence. Everybody would get rid of ad block. Ad block harms creators more than any other single thing on the internet, probably. <laughs> it's just, but we just learned to live with it, basically. Do you think there's an ethical way to make reaction-based content with depri without depriving the original creator of revenue? I, per, for me personally, and I, I could probably be pushed on this. I don't like the idea of trademarks or copyrights on like entertainment stuff past like a year. I think it's, I, I feel like the world is deprived of so much potential awesome stuff. Maybe five years, maybe five years. But like, um, I feel like the world is deprived of so many awesome things when you can copyright things for a hundred years or 75 or however the f long it is right now. Um, so. Yeah, that, I mean that's part of that's part of a feeling. Um, maybe if we wanted to change up copyright, maybe at least make like a mandatory licensing thing where you have to be able to license content from somebody. But I think earlier, like I said before, um, what about a brand like Star Wars? Y yeah, I mean that's why I think Star Wars. Like, imagine if the cop. Uh, I'm at well, no, yeah, like it would just be like imagine a world where like Christopher Nolan can make like a Star Wars trilogy. <laughs> Or like Quentin Tarantino could do Star Wars. Or I, I just, yeah, I think I think the whole world is hurt, is deprived of potential like awesome shit because of how, um, because of how we do copyright for media in the United States. Mandatory licensing does exist for music with respect to covers. Oh, cute. When it comes to music streaming and short slash mid-sized YouTube videos, can you understand how insanely suffocating the constant barrage of ads gets? People engage with multiple platforms, all of which are trying to add max is only normal to... Yeah, but the reason why I think it's gotten so bad partially is, is because so many people ad block. In some tech-driven industries, ad block rates, I think, are as high as like 80, 85, 90%. Like you, so yeah, of course there's a barrage of ads because you're trying to flood the ads onto the few people that still watch them. Um, I don't worry about ads though because on anything that I consume a lot of content of, I just pay the, I just buy, like I have like YouTube Red, that's why I don't get ads on YouTube. Or I had Twitch Turbo when I watch Twitch. Like if I'm gonna sit here and consume hundreds of hours of content a month, I have no problem paying $12 a month for YouTube Premium or for, I think it's YouTube Premium, I don't know if it's YouTube Red anymore, or for Twitch Turbo or whatever like that, you know. Some porn sites are literally unusable without ad blocker. That's just not true. I masturbate more than all of you combined, and I've never ran into a porn site that's un well. That's not true. The big, all the big porn sites, the A list and B list porn sites, are totally usable without ad blocker. Now, if you're going to like www.gachigasmhenteorgasms.com/slash like mommy dommy, like the most niche, then you probably start to use it. You'll, you'll run into like some unusable porn sites. If you get into like really weird, shit. but if you're on like and exits or porn art. Like if you're on any of the mainstream sites, you don't need ad block for any of these. That's just not true. Excited for Path of Exile 2. Can, can we just take a moment collectively to laugh at all the f losers in chat <laughs> that are Overwatch fans <laughs> and did Overwatch 2? Oh my god. Overwatch 2.